watching the intersection of money and power. I'm Karabole Tata, and this is Political Capital. Coming up on the show, Johannesburg Executive Mayor is on a warpath, and in his sights are the Gupta family, as well as tackling over 200 informal settlements that sprawl his city. Herman Mashaba sits down with Chris Bishop on the other side of the half. But first, she started off whispering to power, but soon that whisper turned into a crescendo. Former public protector and now chair of the social justice in the law faculty of Stellenbosch University, Tuli Madonsela, sat down with me earlier to discuss the motive issue of land and why political parties are not giving you the full picture. Tuli Madonsela, for your time, I thank you. Let's begin by talking about the most emotive issue in the South African contemporary space right now, land. You're arguing that the argument is not as binary as it's presented at the public hearings on, on land, that it's much tougher than that. Why do you think it's a tougher argument than just expropriate with or without compensation? Thanks for the privilege. It's more complex because it's not about land that was just stolen only. Mm -hmm. Some of the land was not necessarily stolen, but also Basically, we're saying we want the quickest way to get land distributed through redistribution and, and, and through um, uh, a security of tenure mm -hmm. and restoration mm -hmm. to those from whom land was taken. If, for argument's sake, you do um, take that land, you expropriate it, without compensation. This matter would go to court. So the speed that you're trying to achieve, you're not going to get. Mm -hmm. But there are other issues that were missing out on getting the land back in a manner that would allow the people who get it back to use it productively. And if it's expropriated without compensation, already a lot of farmers mm -hmm. are on a wait and see approach in terms of recapitalization. Mm, mm. And some of them, remember, they have books on, if, for example, a farmer has been farming grapes, uh, their lifespan would be about 20 years or so, and then you've got to recapitalize them, let's get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But somebody has to keep the books uh -huh. to know when is, are these things done. And if you're not gonna have a smooth handover, what assurances would you have that you're gonna get everything right. One video that was done by the Tuma Foundation team mm -hmm. show one, showed one farm that was completely messed up by the previous owners. Well, you couldn't say precisely mm -hmm. it was them. It was, it, 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 was, um, it was taken over, but over a period of time, the place was trashed and uh, machinery broken, houses broken, and who were you going to blame? And land is really that complicated. And when I was reading your article, for instance, that I saw on the financial mail, I thought to myself, you know, there are various and various layers. But for me, I mean, one of the things that continues to bother me today is the difference between the land hearings public debate and what would be, I guess, the incumbent public debate. When you hear President Cyril Ramaphosa going to King Goodwill's Zelitini to reassure him, literally bend the knee and reassure the king that his land is not up for expropriation. How do you say we live in a constitutional democracy, yet some people are equal more than others? I mean, I don't understand it. Well, the truth is uh, the, the president is right in, in saying that trust land will not be expropriated because the whole point of expropriation is for redistribution. Mm -hmm. But if it's true that the president has said we're not going to reform a trust land, which is under tribal authority at this stage, then that's wrong because the, the, the quest for land reform from women and, and other people who are disadvantaged in rural areas is to have some title to that land, ownership preferably, but I would say also for me, cautiously, you, you still want to have guarantees for people. We've given people ownership of our DP housing, but without the education about the property, they're selling it to the, to, to the immediate bidder. But just to say about the president, mm -hmm. maybe to in, sim in simple terms, 
there's nothing wrong with him saying the land will not be expropriated. Because Why? remember, the ANC approach is not the EFF approach. Mm -hmm. The EFF approach is saying we're going to expropriate all land and give it in the hands of the state, and nobody will ever own land. Everyone will rent land from the state. The ANC is saying it's going to expropriate land in historically advantaged communities mm -hmm. and redistribute it to those who are disadvantaged and apartheid. And of course, historic advantage can't be the chiefs. Mm -hmm. And especially when you look at the fact that traditional leaders have not covered themselves in glory when it comes to empowering women, especially the most vulnerable in those communities. Land has been a great source of division and has been used in a very patriarchal sense. Absolutely. In fact, it would be interesting uh, for those who are talking about expropriating land without compensation. In families, for example, where the land belonged to our grandfather, mm -hmm. and, um, and then uh, my eldest uncle, who was the oldest male son, or the uh, oldest, oldest male, male relative, male relative mm -hmm. took all the land for themselves, and it's now in their name. Are we going to expropriate it and then make sure that we divide it properly among all of those people that were supposed to get it? Because even that, it was wrong. Uh, it was a distortion of customary law because the oldest male relative was never supposed to inherit mm. in his own right. Was supposed to step into the shoes of the, of the dead relative and, the, and then be a trustee for the rest of the mm. relatives. But that's mm. not what happened. Mm people stole that land. So I, but I haven't heard anything on that narrative on what happens to the land where widows were dispossessed, daughters were mm -hmm. di dispossessed, and just generally girl children. Do, you, yeah. do you see any avenue at all in which almost the traditional way of thinking about, I mean, a female rights, for instance, to a male rights, you know? And I find, w you find these narratives when you look at rural areas, and not to say that there isn't a, a freedom of thought in the rural areas that can really enable people to live better lives, but I'm saying that it's, it's cultured in, 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 in traditional ways that are not applicable if we're going to raise the kinds of society that we're going to raise. More women would need to be empowered with working the land because as it stands, more women work the land than men. Actually right, um, women would have to be uh, empowered with the authority to control land as a means of production because mm -hmm. you're right, in rural areas they're the ones who do most of the subsistence farming and because the men would be in the mines and this has happened for centuries with men being the mines and, and women looking after things. Uh, regarding the liberation of a woman's mind, I think that has happened but suppression lies in the rules, that the rules have not looked at the fact that women themselves have been liberated. The Rural Women's Movement mm -hmm. with Mam Lydia Compe mm -hmm. did a whole lot of work around getting women to assert their rights and, um, and, and requiring title to land and requi requiring uh, uh, delinked uh, possession rights from men because mm -hmm. at the moment you have a right to to use the land provided you are married to a man. Mm -hmm. If your man dies and you are married to a Ngema and it's a Ngema community mm -hmm. and now you want to marry a Katlehong, mm -hmm. I mean, or yes, mm -hmm. or a Tlamini, it becomes a problem because then you, you, you expect it to leave that land mm -hmm. and go somewhere else and, and, and that's not proper. And that's the space that I think the president should not interfere with. That's the space that he should let women talk with their own voices. Mm -hmm. He should actually be one of the voices that empowers uh, traditional authorities to understand that it is important for women to be given these freedoms because women who have proper control for resources within their means are going to drive development in those rural yeah. areas as opposed to women who don't have those controls. I'm going to take this argument back to the land hearings which we've been, we've been seeing. And really when I, when I also look at those land hearings, I seem to see two types of people. Black, who claim that they are dispossessed and their land was stolen, and white, who fear that their now land that they own will also be you know, deprived from them. 
Are you surprised at how racially charged South Africa is over that issue? And was it socially responsible to just put that issue out in the open without saying the real issues at stake? The real issues at stake is that there's nothing black and white about land. Yes. Land belongs to somebody and it's owned by somebody. And before you dispossess anybody, you're going to have to settle the books. Well, that, that's, that's true. It has not been curated properly mm -hmm. because it's true that the dispossessed are black. The law did not allow black people to own land, and at some stage they did own the mm -hmm. land. It was taken away, and some of it was given to chiefs. If we look at Mpumalanga, mm -hmm. Dakas Crow, where my father grew up, you will see that they owned that land with the help of Pixley, Gaisa Kaseme, and, and then uh, that was interfered with. So there is a black and white issue, but to present this case as if it's either we take the land from historically advantaged white communities uh, back without compensation or we do nothing. Because at this stage, you know, all of the, the, the lovely rural people that are talking about land, they're presenting it, we want land. So that's an honest request mm -hmm. from our people. But because then they've been given this answer that if you want land, do you then agree that it should be taken uh, it should be expropriated without compensation, then people are saying yes, because nobody is saying to them, okay, yes, you want land, but here are alternative ways we could get mm. it back. Mm. Which one do you support? And that's the binary mm. nature. It's been a polarizing argument and, and curated very, very badly. Mm. But again, with, with uh, the governing party, sadly, sometimes they send people to debates who don't understand the governing party mm. policy. For example, we had, when we had the June 16 uh, debate um, on, on a, a democracy dialogue mm. on land, the ANC representative was um, uh, presenting a view that was exactly the same as the EFF's view. <laughs> and then I attended another land dialogue at Stellenbosch University where Mr. Kodongwane uh, presented and mm -hmm. he presented a view that was more similar to the ANC resolution that was taken in December mm -hmm. where it was, yes, we're looking at uh, land expropriation, but we'll make sure that it doesn't harm agriculture, it doesn't harm food security, mm -hmm. etc. And the narrative, uh, the narrative has even increased to look at a constitutional uh, a, 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 a avoiding the violation of other human rights because mm -hmm. land rights are related to other rights as well. And they've also been looking at social cohesion mm -hmm. as one of the considerations they're going to make. So I wish it had been curated with somebody who starts the dialogue and give people everything. But for example, the people are not even told that, by the way, the reason the land reform process has failed you mm -hmm. is not the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So it's being presented to you once a, in a Section 25 change because you don't have land, then people are saying yes. But they're not being told that actually we had an opportunity to change the law, the Expropriation Act, mm -hmm. which was passed long before the Constitution, this is 1975. 1975. Exactly. Uh -huh. So people are not being told, given an overview at the start of this conversation, that actually we've not tried to expropriate. With the means that we already have. Yeah, well, we haven't tried to expropriate with non-market uh, related uh, compensation, but which is question. one option. Can you understand why the marginalized people, people who say that they don't have land, are really paying for like all or nothing? Well, because that's how the, the argument has been presented. But also, if you're hungry, mm. there's also a certain sense of hangry. Especially, I mean, if, for example, you're feeling sad because you feel somebody violated your rights, you might be feeling sad but a little bit more compassionate. But if somebody comes and, and, and they rub it in that this is what this person, what this person did to you was wrong, you become angrier. Mm. And, and that's what's happening with our people. But having said that, there's still space to negotiate. I honestly don't think that the, the channel we've taken is going to deliver speedy land reform. We're now off to a short ad break, but when we return, the executive mayor of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba, has written a letter to the director of public prosecutions, Sean Abrams, asking him to do more about indentured labor in South Africa. More about that on the other side.